<clears throat> well, good evening. I just got over here to my pile of shrapnel, but uh, <clears throat> when I was walking over here, we're gonna we're gonna start this video Sunday evening. I don't know if I'll upload it. I don't know if I'll make a whole video. Probably not. So <clears throat> we'll see what happens tomorrow. But when I was walking across there, I was pretty excited. Like it's all grass now. Last year and everything, it was just dirt and mud. So the odd time it would rain, it would turn into a big mud pit. Spent most of the time with no rain, so it would just be like a dust bowl, and the house was just dusty all the time. But uh, now we got a fairly, fairly good catch of grass there. Of course, we were just talking at supper because it's what it's quarter after six. So uh, <clears throat> what are we gonna do for a lawnmower? We got like twice the lawn now, and this is the beast that we've been <laughs> we've been running for I don't know at least twenty five years because this thing's been here my whole life. And a few years ago, Dad and I made like a uns unwritten, unspoken pact to keep it running despite <clears throat> any uh, any disaster it may encounter or any breakdown. So she gets uh, <clears throat> the royal treatment and it's more or less just to irritate my mom and Corey because they're the ones that do the majority of the grass mowing. And I mean, they would like something a little better for sure, right? You can, you can understand that, but we keep her running. So I did, uh, I took the deck off of one of my brother's lawnmowers that he was junking because the deck was all right. Some minor welding and bank. Had a fancy new Craftsman deck to go on there. New spindles, new pulleys. The steering had given out, so it's got some new gears there. <clears throat> she, uh, the old engine dynamited one time. I don't actually know what Dad did to fix it, but he, he got it running again. It's still got the original engine in it. Uh, new starter, new starter plastic gear thingamajig. You can buy those. It's funny, you can buy all that stuff, eh? <clears throat> And if you're willing to put in the sweat equity, you can keep that stuff running. But of course, I mean, it is. <laughs> we'll keep it anyways, and we'll use it to mow, say, out by the bins or along the ditches and stuff where there might be rocks or roots or whatever. We, gotta, we do got to find something better. So we were looking, you know, you can get a pretty good John Deere for around 9800 bucks. That's like a little bit of a, I don't know if it's the full commercial one, but it's like between a residential, I think, and a commercial one. Residential one is going to run you like eight grand for a zero turn 60 inch deck, which is kind of what we're looking for. If we're going to buy a lawnmower, we may as well get a, a big enough one to do to do all of it. But of course, then you can get down into your <laughs> Cup Cadets and your uh, Husqvarna's and things like that that are a little bit cheaper. And I just don't know 100% where we're going to go with it all because, yeah, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I was uh, I was told if you order one, it's like five, six weeks out. I don't understand that anymore. I guess stuff just got so expensive that these dealerships don't want to carry a, a ton of inventory. I can't say that I blame them, but it is unfortunate that stuff is so expensive and you got to you know, like pre-buy a lawnmower. That seems to be a little bit crazy to me. <laughs> but for this evening's project, so uh, these pallet forks, that are now cut off were on that homemade bracket that wind is unbelievably brutal out of east <clears throat> so i got a little bit uh, ramrody with the old girl there last summer actually unloading those crappy bins that are behind these bins and i bent it it actually broke and bent and then actually i i was told by a welder he wasn't even sure if it's legal or whatever anymore to weld forks together so these are <clears throat> whoever did it did a really good job but they're welded it's not one small thingamajig and with as much as you see it's welded up here too it's welded all over with as much as we're moving and the weights we're moving we just went ahead and got well from the big city there in beaver lodge <clears throat> those are 4400 4, pound forks and these are 50 500 or something um because we buy these plates at straightway so you can go from they they make i think they have anything anything you want you just phone them you say hey i got a th 460b cat machine quick attach and they're like oh yeah okay we got a plate so they go from the quick attach to skid steer attachments and i phoned them and i said hey i got a case 580 backhoe and they said, yeah, no problem. So they, well, you can't see it over there, but the plate is on the back hole. So <clears throat> with that, as soon as I run the, the plug in here to get the hydro, uh, auxiliary hydraulics back to the front of the telehandler, 
I'll be able to run all my skid steer attachments just like I can with the backhoe. So all the, the rotavator, that sweeper, the brush grapple, all that stuff. And uh, boy, is that sure handy. But anyways, why I'm mentioning all this. So I cut those forks off and I drove this square tubing through here. The square tubing used to be what held the postal logger, but it was always mounted on the side like this. So it was hard on the loader, hard on the tractor, hard to get it straight. Now I'm going to weld this tubing right onto this plate, cut this off right here somewhere, drill a hole in that and mount the postal drill motor right in the center. And then I think we'll get more accurate holes. <coughs> and this, uh, this of course is all evening projects because we drill probably 18 holes in my whole entire life. So it's really not an important thing. Something I just come out and toil with while the <clears throat> well, there's still a bit of light left. Um, and then who knows, if this thing actually works, maybe we'll just start drilling holes like crazy. Just drill holes all over the place. <clears throat> maybe strike oil, who knows. <clears throat> okay, well, we're not going to zoom in on the welds because I'm not a welder and uh, I don't want to hear about it. <clears throat> it doesn't actually have to be strong because that, I didn't even measure it, maybe three inch square tubing, two and a half or whatever, is hammered inside the other one. So all it has to do is hold the integrity of keeping it apart, which when I hammered it in there, I tacked it and actually just welded it like garbage all the way around on the outside. And then the inside, the inside, and the outside again. Drilled the hole, found a little tiny auger here. Probably hard to see because there's just stuff everywhere, but we don't clean up so much. So anyways, got a little pin here. This is going to be a good size for those fence posts. Make a pilot hole. Uh, keep in mind, I'm doing this. We don't have a post pounder per se. Uh, behind the dryer over there, laying in the bush, is a three-point hitch post pounder, which I use to smack in the uh, 50 or so posts I've ever hammered in my life. And then I decided that building fences was for the birds. And if they ever brought back the chain gangs, that's what the first job they should have them do is build fences while they're picking up the garbage on the side of the road. But probably won't get to that. That would be a good use of tax dollars, keeping people uh, keeping people busy. Instead, we just, well, we don't do anything in Canada, but keep them sitting, sitting in a cell or whatever they do. I don't know. I'm not familiar with Canadian jails. But uh, <clears throat> so because we don't have a post pounder, this is what we're going to do. Now, yes, we could borrow. Uh, my father-in-law has a very good post pounder. Also, we have 10,000 friends that have post pounders. However, it's nice to have something of your own that you can work at your own pace, right? So there's nothing wrong with going to borrow something, but if you go to borrow a post pounder or even go to rent a post pounder, <coughs> I find, in my experience, when I've rented things or borrowed things, it actually takes quite a bit of the fun out of it. So you're in a rush, you want to get it back to the individual who owns it, or you want to get it back to town, so on and so forth. This, like I say, is, it's, it is what it is, it's some salvaged, some salvaged junk, but uh, it's going to work. So this will be able to pivot now like it's supposed to, down and then side to side. So I should get a pretty, pretty straight hole. I don't know. And it was funny because Corey and I were talking about that just before I came out of here or before I came out here after supper. I said, I'm going to go to the shop. And I'm going to fab this thing up. And then you and buddy can use it tomorrow while I'm not there. That would be for the best because if I'm there, I'm going to yell, I'm going to scream. It's not going to work. So anyways, I thought about all of the grinding particles and the welding smoke that I can take for one evening. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna uh, grab myself a shower and uh, I don't know seven seven thirty. Not sure. Write out tickets for tomorrow. I guess. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.